Hi everybody! Today we're going to continue in our lessons on the Earth. Today we're going to read a book called What's So Special About Planet Earth? And we're going to learn that there's a lot of things special about planet Earth. In our solar system, there are eight planets. There's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But there's only one planet that can have people on it. And that planet is Earth. And we're going to learn all about Earth today and what makes it different than all the other planets. So here we go. What's so special about planet Earth? Planet Earth is not the only planet we know of but it's a pretty good place for people to live. There's Earth, and then this is the moon. Of course, Earth's weather does not always suit us. Sometimes it is too hot. Other times it is so cold that our fingers and toes feel frozen. Sometimes wild weather brings hurricanes, tornadoes, and floods. Suppose you decided you'd like to move to another planet, a more comfortable planet. After all, there are seven other planets to choose from in our solar system. So there's the one that's too hot. Sometimes it gets really cold here in Michigan. Floods don't happen too often. Hurricanes don't really happen, but sometimes tornadoes do. Those can be scary. We'll see what would happen if we went to the other planets to live. In the center is the sun, a huge ball of hot gases. With its powerful pull of gravity, the sun holds all the planets in place as they orbit and travel around it. The eight planets that orbit the Sun are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. What would it be like to live on another planet instead of Earth? If you're thinking about moving, you'd want to visit first to see if the other planets are right for you. And this is our solar system, so here's Earth right here. And then Mars... Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, no, Uranus and Neptune. And here's the sun, and we spin all around the sun. It's kind of cool to see, isn't it? Imagine there was a spacecraft fast enough to give you a quick tour of the planets. First, you'd visit the planets closest to the sun, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Like Earth, they have solid, rocky surfaces. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun. And as Mercury has almost no atmosphere or gases to protect it, the Sun side is a sizzling 800 degrees. You would burn. While the dark side is bitterly cold. Because there's almost no oxygen, no one would be able to breathe on Mercury. Even if there was a way to, to survive, in the heat and the cold. Look at this. You'd get so hot if you lived here, but then you'd freeze to death if you lived here. But one thing that the Earth has that Mercury doesn't is oxygen for us to breathe. Because we need to breathe to live. So I don't think we'd want to live on Mercury. Let's see about Venus. We'll try Venus next. As you approach, you'll see it's covered with clouds, and the surface isn't visible. Is it safe to land? If the spacecraft pilots lower you through the clouds, you can see for yourself. Uh-oh. Your, ga your gauges show that atmosphere is poisonous for people to breathe. Oh no. It's mostly carbon dioxide with droplets of sulfite acid, and the surface temperature is nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really hot. That's even hotter than Mercury. You couldn't live for a minute there. Get out fast before you're cooked. Look at that. It's not very safe to live on Venus, is it? Oh, 
I wonder if Mars will work out better. You'll pass through the orbit of Earth, the third planet on your way to Mars, and the fourth planet. You can land on Mars, but you'll have to put on your spacesuit. Like Mercury, Mars has almost no oxygen. You could have fun jumping around Mars. The gravity is about one-third of Earth's, so you'd be very light. But Mars's days are usually below freezing, and nights get over negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really cold. And the only place known for water is frozen at the poles under the surface. People could survive on Mars if they lived in a protective shelter. But if you like trees, Mars is not for you. Mars would be an awesome place to live because you wouldn't have any air and you'd have to wear a spacesuit every time you went outside. It might be cool at first, but I think eventually you'd want to go outside without a spacesuit. Wow. Rocketing past the asteroid's belt. We come to the first of the giant outer planets, Jupiter, number five. It's bigger than all the other planets put together. More than 1,300 Earths could fit inside. Wow, that's a big planet. But no spaceship can land on Jupiter <clears throat> since it's mostly made of gas. It's not solid like Earth. And talk about storms. The great big red spot, bigger than Earth's diameter, is a giant windstorm that's been raging for 300 years. You can scratch Jupiter off the places to live. Look how big Jupiter is, you guys. 1,300 Earths could fit inside here. That is a big planet. But we couldn't live there because there's no oxygen and there's no place to stand on Jupiter. You'd fall right through. Can't really land there. <clears throat> Next comes Saturn, the ringed planet. The outer planets also have rings, but Saturn's rings are the most magnificent. They're made up of trillions of pieces of ice, from tiny specks to house-sized chunks. Saturn is cold and stormy and made of mostly gas, so you couldn't live here. So here's Saturn, and this is made of gas too, so you couldn't land on Saturn. And the rings look cool, but they're kind of dangerous because they spin around, pieces of ice spin around. So you couldn't walk on the rings either. It'd be cool if you could though. Uranus is the seventh planet. Even if Uranus were tipped back up, it would still be a cold, stormy gas planet. Its axis, the imaginary line around it, spins tipped sideways. And as a result, the days and nights on Uranus are each 42 hours long. So our days and nights are 24 hours long. But if you're going to be on Uranus, they are, are 42 hours long. So their days are really long. You'd have to take a nap. Uranus also spins on its side. So it spins like this all around. So everything would be upside down if we lived on Uranus like this. So we couldn't live there. Plus it's made of mostly gas. So you'd fall right through. Earth's looking pretty good, isn't it? Neptune is the eighth planet. It's the farthest from the sun and therefore very cold. Its temperature is negative 360 degrees. Burr! and its windstorms blow across the surface at 1,500 miles per hour. Whew, you get blown away. Neptune is certainly not a place for people to live. It's time to go home to our very special planet Earth. What makes Earth a just right place for us? It's neither too hot or too cold. You can breathe without a spacesuit, and there's plenty of water to drink. It's good to be back. <clears throat> so here's Neptune. And it's really cold there. But they got back to Earth and look, there's grass, there's the sun, he's drinking some water. And there really wasn't water on any other planets. 
that makes Earth a little bit unique. Is that there's water for us to drink. Earth's temperature is right for us because we are the right distance from the sun, about 93 million miles away. Earth's marvelous atmosphere filters out most of the sun's harmful rays, and it even protects us from meteors, which usually burn out from air friction. One-fifth of the atmosphere is oxygen, ideal proportions of oxygen for Earth's creatures to breathe. No other planet in the solar system is at just the right distance from the sun, with just the right atmosphere to protect and sustain life. So here's the sun, and so here's some asteroids that are coming in, but they burn up because our atmosphere protects us. And then there's our trees that we like so much. Some of the gases in Earth's atmosphere are called greenhouse gases. They tap some of the sun's heat. Keeping the air near Earth warmer would otherwise, than it would otherwise be. This is called the greenhouse effect. Fresh water to drink makes Earth special. So does ocean water. About 70% of Earth's surfaces is covered in ocean. All living things need water and no other known planet has as much water as Earth. Here we go. So there's the water, and then there's the greenhouse effect. It's kind of cool. Earth's ocean helps life on Earth in different ways. Millions of people and other creatures as well depend on the sea for food. The oceans also store the sun's heat, and ocean creatures circulate the heat, heat over the continent, making the land more comfortable. Powered by the sun's energy, life-giving fresh water moves all around the world. The sun's heat evaporates in the ocean, turning it into water vapor, leaving salt behind. The water vapor rises from the clouds. Many of the clouds are blown by the wind over land. The water from the clouds falls as, rain, as it rains and snows, creating rivers, streams, and lakes, which give us water for drinking, washing, and growing food. Most of the water flows back into the oceans and evaporates again, continuing the water cycle. So it's how fresh water is made. There's a lot of fresh water in Michigan. There's the Great Lakes. Have you ever been to the Great Lakes? Maybe you went to Lake Michigan or Lake Superior or Lake Erie or Lake Huron. They're all really fun lakes to visit and big bodies of fresh water. We have not always taken good care of Earth. Industrial waste from factories pollutes rivers, streams, and lakes. Toxic chemicals from landfills steep into underground water shortage, called aquafilters. Sewage and garbage water can make fish and other animals sick. Airplanes, ships, motor vehicles, and power plants put huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the air. All the CO2 increases the greenhouse effect and makes Earth warmer, too warm for some plants and animals to live. We need to make sure that we take good care of Earth so we can live here because it's the only planet we can live on. Because when we visited the other planets, we found out those don't really work too well to live there. So it's really important that we take care of Earth and pick up our trash and don't throw things on the ground, but throw things in the garbage or recycling. By conserving resources and using energy wisely, we can help keep Earth healthy. Here are some things you and your family can do. Growing a vegetable garden can save trips to the store. Reusable shopping bags keep plastic bags out of landfills. Short showers use less water. People-powered lawnmower lawnmowers make no air pollution. Energy-efficient lights use less electricity. Well-tuned cars with properly fil 
Ugh, properly inflated tires. Use less fuel. Bicycle riding. Walking and cause no air pollution. Don't forget to bring your dog along. Which way does your family help save the earth? I know in my family we use reusable grocery bags. We try to take short showers. And if we can walk to the places we try to walk, we can also help by picking up trash, like I said. That's a cool, easy way to help save the earth. So sometimes when you're walking and you see a piece of trash, it's nice to pick those up. Sometimes we even bring a little bag along to collect the garbage to throw it out later so it doesn't infect the animals or the plants around it. Doing these simple things can help too. Recycle more. Plant trees and bushes as they absorb pollution from the air. Put a sweater on instead of turning up the heat. Pick up litter, even if it's not yours. If everyone works together, we can keep Earth a very special place. All of us, for all of us to live. So there's some more options. We can recycle. We can plant some trees. That's fun to do. Instead of turning the heat on in the house, you can just put a sweater on and then you don't have to use up as much energy. And like I said, it's always important to pick up trash. And then it helps all people and animals live together. Look, even some baby ducks. The end. I hope you enjoyed this book. It's good to learn about different planets, but especially Earth. My question for you today is what does your family do to help protect the Earth? There are lots of examples in the book, but I'll also write them out on Flipgrid to remind you. I hope you guys have a good day, and remember to keep our Earth healthy. Bye!